G'day guys, Matty from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you today. Going to give you a rundown on uh, our concept Ascot today. So, the reason being is because the setup that we've done on this van is what we're doing most of these days. We're getting people off grid, and not just 12 volt. I'm talking the ability to run your air conditioner, coffee machine, hair dryer, whatever. Anything from your house CPAP machines, you know, pedestal fans, box fans, oh, the list will go on. So, I'll give you the rundown. Now, disregard the fact that mine's a, it's, it's a bigger system, um, but there are sort of smaller systems that you can do to get you off grid um, for basic stuff. So, you know, if you only want to run coffee machines and small items, we can do that. This one here I've got in mine is 570 amp hours of lithium, 960 watts on the roof, and a full Victron Cymarine setup. Now, what that is, that's an inverter charger all in one, so what that means is when I'm on mains power or running a generator, it'll charge the batteries at whatever rate I program it to. And the second power is lost, it'll click over and continue to run everything from the batteries. Completely automatic. I'm not talking 12 volt here, I'm talking mains power. So that's your air conditioner, microwave, everything that's plugged into a mains GPO. So that's the inverter um, setup. It is a 3,000 V8, so it's about 2,500 watts continuous, continuous, so that's enough to run all your household items. Not at once, of course, but, you know, individually, without a drama. Now, I also have the Victron 50 amp solar controller. Now, I'm running a string, um, two strings from the roof, so six panels, six 160s, and I'm maxing out the solar controller every day. So I'm putting in 50 amps every hour in pretty much from about 9 in the morning, right up till four, five in the afternoon. It's absolutely nuts, the amount of power that this thing can produce. Um, and with the ability to do that, I can, I know how much power I can use, meaning, you know, if I'm pumping in 50 per hour, it doesn't matter if I drain 300 overnight, you know, or even 200 overnight, I'm gonna replace it in four or five hours, it won't matter. Um, so 570 amp hours of lithium I'm running here. Now, I'm running two monitoring systems and they are split and I'll tell you why. I run the Cymarine setup to monitor each individual circuit, not as a total, even though I can, that's done with the Victron. So I'm running the Cymarine setup to show me my circuits individually. And what that means is if I want to see what my lights and my outlets are doing separately to the rest, I can. You can't do that with Victron. Victron has one shunt and one shunt can only show you one response so with one one output only um, as a total is great but when you want to look at each individual item like I do like I want to see what a diesel heater draws overnight um, or even the whole camp trip I can actually go into the column counter in the Cymarine and I can see how many amp hours my diesel heater has used for X period and then reset it really cool so also I'll go through the tank monitoring on but that's how it's that's one of the screens I've set up in it. It's really cool. If you can see it with the light there. But, you know, I've got my, I do have my total there. Um, and that's a total of amps what I'm drawing. So you can see there I've got solar there. It's really late in the day. It's you know, 8 o'clock at night or something there. Pump it in 7 and a bit amps. The DC charges there. Pump range hoods. Portable solar. I've got an Anderson plug on the side. Um, lights. And then the other one's left over for whatever I want. I've got eight channels there and I can tie them all into one. So I'll go through with you under the bed in a second. But on the Cymarine, the other reason why I did it is it's got a barometer, which is really cool for the weather. I've got temp sensors. Now I can run as many temp sensors as I want. Um, I'm running a battery temp sensor on this one and a fridge temp. So I've got a you know sensor going all the way into my three-way fridge. Yes, I'm running a three-way fridge. That's because it's still going. When it fails, the compressor fridge will be going in. So we'll get to that later. So there we go for that. Now, really cool again is this. Now, yeah, we've all got tank monitoring, uh, water tank level monitoring. We've all got them, but not many will have them like this. So what this is, these are differential pressure sensors. These come out in a lot of the Kimberley caravans. Um, a differential pressure sensor is accurate to 2%. So I don't know if you can see it, but I've got 82 litre tanks, three of them. So tank one's showing me 10%, nine liters. Tank two's showing me 24%, 20 liters. And tank three's showing me 62% with 51 liters left. Now that is very accurate. 
So that's differential pressure sensors. It's not like your resistance um, sensors with your little four points that show you, you know, empty quarter, half, three quarters of full. This is very accurate. So that's the Cymarine setup. Expensive, but unbelievable. Once you've got one, they're like a they're like an iPhone to play with. You know, they they're built amazingly. You know, it's they're waterproof. They're made for the marine environment. So check out the Cymarine stuff. Um, absolutely unbelievable. Now. I'll quickly show you the Victron. Um, this is the Color GX screen. This is a, it's an older screen, but I've got the ability to do everything from this. And I can go into mobile mode. Now, this one here is really cool. I can control my AC current limit. Okay, so I've set it for 10 amps. So what that means is if I've got a generator outside, for whatever reason, I don't need a generator, but if I've got a generator and it is only 2,400 continuous, that's 10 amps. Well, I can set that. So if I've got a little Honda 1000, you know, I can set that. I can bring that down to four, four or something amps. Yeah, it's, it's easy, I can do it on the fly. It's, you know, once, you, once you've got the ability to program your current import, see? Hard to see if you can see. But I'm bringing that six, five amps, four amps, four amps, and there we go. So. Back to 10. Now, what that means is your generator is not going to kick out when things that you turn on, you know, go over your current. As we all know, generators, especially with the air conditioners, they'll turn off. Well, not with this system. If I'm running a Honda 2 outside and my air conditioner, well, the old air conditioner, would kick in, it would make it clip off. Well, if I had this set up, that wouldn't be the case. Um, this would supplement the power from the batteries while the compressor kicks in and then it would continue to run from the jetty. But enough of that because that's not what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you my setup off grid. Now, to be off grid mains power wise, energy efficiency is, is the key. Um, managing power when you're off grid is the key. Running items for only when you need to is the key. So that's where this comes into play. So what I do is I have it set on, let's put that back up to 10. What I do is I have this, leave, leave that on 10. And I actually run a different mode here. I'll leave it on another screen, which is probably easier to see. Uh, where do we go? We'll go page. I can actually view everything that's going on on the fly. So that's the Victron set up there. Now I can view this online anywhere in the world where I've got this hooked up to the um, Wi-Fi here at home so I can actually log on and check out what's going on. So it's all hooked up to a hotspot on my iPad for when I'm away. And what that means is I can monitor everything. Everything's data logged. You can see how much solar's coming in at the moment. You can follow the path of power. 62% state of charge in the battery at the moment. 13.3 volts, we're receiving 4.1 amps over what we're drawing. Now that's the thing with the Victron, the single shunt. See, if I start turning lights on, that's cool. That number's gonna drop, but I can't see what each individual circuit's doing. Hence why I got the Cymarine, I can see that. Um, and that's why I've got it. So. Great for that. I can see my mains charger putting in power. I can see my DC charger putting in power. And I can see my solar charger putting in power all individually, not as a cumulative. Well, I can see the total as well, but I can see them individually as well. So that's it there. Now, with the Victron also, you've got DC power. That's what we're using now as a little light on at the rear. No grid. We are inverting. And there's our AC loads. So 16 watts is our AC loads at the moment. Now, that will be... The inverter on standby, as you can see, the microwave is on. Yep, that's on standby. So it's probably, you know, that's why they tell you to turn things off at the power point to stop power being wasted. You can imagine what a house would draw with lots of stuff on. But point is here, we're off grid now. Um, as you can see, like I said, there's no grid coming up here. If I plug mains in, that's going to show up how many watts. And that will show you that we're on grid. Now... I've installed a Dometic Harrier Plus up here. Um, I took out the old B2200 Dometic, great air conditioner, and it did get cold, but the efficiency is nowhere near what this is. This thing will pull about 50 to 70 amps per hour. So as I said earlier, I can pump in 50 amps at the moment from my solar, just on my roof. Now, if I put my portable in, that's another 15 
from my portable. So, yeah, I can charge and run this air conditioner during the day. If you've got enough solar on your roof and you can do it with a portable fold out on top of it, you, it's, it's fine. So I'm going to turn this on now. So we've got that set to 22. We'll go down, probably go 21. And there we go. You can see it. We've got 21 at the moment. Now, I'm going to bring you up to the screen just to show you what the Harrier draws. Now, it's an inverter air conditioner, so you'll hear it ramp up. So you can see the minus amps at the moment. Now it'll ramp up, ramp down, ramp up, ramp down, and the average over an hour, over the hour, is between 50 and 70. Back down to 56, there we go. So it's idling at 56, 57. 57 and back down beautiful so there we go so that's running now it's down to 56 so that's you know and oh, cold air that's beautiful so that's pulling 57 amps now so like i said i've got enough solar to keep up with it but the point is 57 amps at the moment 50 amps if you've got 300 amp hours of lithium well you can run this for a few hours during the day even if you only got three 400 watts of solar that's fine you can still run this during the day. Now, this is the plus. This is the biggest uh, air conditioner. They've also got the light, a um, smaller air conditioner. You know, better for vans, sort of sub-19 foot. Um, mine's a 20-footer, uh, close to 21 foot. So this is, it's primo for this. This thing is cold within, like, within 10 minutes. It's crisp in here, 15 minutes tops. It's, it's brilliant. So I can run this air conditioner while I'm driving before I get to camp and, um, you know, get the van nice and cold. And because I'm charging with the DC charger, as well as the solar on the roof while I'm driving, that's 50 on the roof in full sun, plus 30 from the DC charger. Now, it's only a small DC charger. I could have put a bigger one in, but, you know, 30 plus 50, that's 80. That's way more than what I need. It's way more than what I'm able to draw from the air conditioner. So, and that's something that's on every hour for a few hours, and this is a big drawer. Coffee machines, microwaves, you know, even hair dryers, they don't really matter because you're not using these items for hours on end, you know, unless you're a lion or something like that with a <laughs> big hair mane. But yeah, this um, this is what will draw the most. Now, if this is running for three hours and you pull sort of between 50 and 70, you're getting up to that 75% mark of your lithium battery setup without solar coming in. So as long as you manage your power, you are able to run your air conditioner off grid. Yes, you can change to a Harrier and they're more efficient. Um, the main problem with the older Ibis and the older Dometics is the cut in, the compressor cut in. There's no soft start on them. You can't put soft starts on it, it's just not worth it in my opinion to put one of these on. Um, items are getting more efficient, but you can run the old Ibis 3s off of a inverter. It has to be a good quality inverter like the Victron. Um, with a massive transformer in it to take it and yeah it'll run it all right but you won't get much time out of it so the right way to do it if you want to be off grid and run your air conditioner um, the best way to do it is have a good amount of storage minimum of about 300 amp hours of lithium the more the better the more solar you've got the better good quality inverter charger um, and a Dometic Harrier I mean yeah once you set up like this it's it's good fun to go away you've got the ability to, you don't have to worry about booking in the caravan parks. And we all know how much they cost these days. So, yeah, getting quite expensive. So being off-grid, um, albeit an outlay, you've just got more freedom. And that's what we wanted to do. So really cool stuff here. And there we go. I'll go back to the screen again. You can see what she's drawing. So that's still running, pulling 50, 54, 55 amps at the moment. And I'm at 61% state of charge. So... If I went to um, the Bluetooth, so I'll quickly do that for you. Um, it'll probably load up the solar because I just had that going before. This is what I've used, you know, it's hard to see it, but there we go. That's what I've used in the last few days, 
how much energy I've received and such like that. So I can see what's going on with my solar. You can see it individually if you log on to the Victron stuff individually. Um, but like I said, if I wanted to see my solar, how many amps are coming in separately, as you can see there, that's logging onto the Victron 6.8, 6.7, 6.8. Well, I didn't want to have to keep opening up an app and logging onto each individual Victron item to see each individual Victron product. This is why I got the Cymarine. See? 6.6, 6.7, that's my solar. So that's separately. So that, that's always on. These two items live here. So I can see it separately. Now, I'll go out of the um, Victron um, set up here and I'll move over to the uh, Bluetooth side of things. So on all these devices here, let's go to the uh, the shunt. Now this is this is here. This is this one, but in more detail with the Bluetooth. So if we click into this one here, now this is going to show you time remaining, just a rough idea of what's going on. There we go. I haven't logged onto this before, but I don't, I've never needed to, so just showing you here what's going on. So currently, if you can read that, that says five hours remaining, right? Now that's because I've programmed into this the five, five hours and two minutes remaining. That's because I've programmed into this my 570 amp hours of lithium, and it's taking into account that 50 something amps that the air conditioner is drawing. It's working it out and it's saying, you've got five hours and three minutes to go until your, I think I said a discharge floor of 20%. So I've got five hours and three, three minutes now to go until I hit 20% state of charge from 60. Now, how good's that? It tells me how much time I've got remaining. That's what you want. You just know, and that's, that's absolutely a brilliant setup. This is, this is how you get off grid without having to worry about power. I mean, what is it? It's like, so it's nearly eight o'clock. I've got an air conditioner running. You know, I'm at 60% state of charge and I've got five hours to go until I've got to hit 20%. Now, 20% 20 of 570 is a lot of power. That's enough to run whatever I want during the night. If I'm getting 50 per hour in peak sun, you know, six, seven hours the next day, well, I can get it from nine o'clock. Um, you know, I'm gonna replace a lot of energy the next day. So. That's why I try and tell people, whenever you want to run an inverter and you want to be off grid, a really good solar setup is vital. You can never, ever have too much solar. It is absolutely important to get that charge back into the batteries. If you don't, you just have to manage your batteries a little bit better. So lots of solar, lots of storage, good quality components, and you guys can be off grid like this. I mean, it's just perfect. It's what you want the ability to monitor everything and know what's going on is just peace of mind so you don't have to worry about it and the numbers are really easy if you're living from this it's actually very easy to work out what's going on there's no trickery involved it's simple very easy screens to see you can see where the power's going you can see what's going on how much solar what's left in my batteries how much dc power i'm using what my ac loads are using you can see it all here there's no trickery involved it's simple very easy to use so yeah if you got any more questions give me a call guys you know where to get me be well